All right, welcome back. Let's continue this homework help video. Problem 28. What does the cost of a flight, in, uh, or the cost of a flight is related to the length of the flight by this equation, where x is distance and y is dollars. What does the slope of this line represent? So that number right there has a meaning in the context of this problem. If x is distance, then this number is modifying distance to help us come up with cost. So if it's modifying distance to come up with cost, it must be the cost per mile. So it turns miles into cost. The y-intercept of this function down here, well, let's think about this in terms of if I plugged in zero for x, I went zero miles, I would still have to pay $27.9. So we could think of that as something like overhead the amount you have to pay, and then the, the price goes up from there related to how far it goes. So, you know, just the cost of just sitting down on the plane, plane and then you pay per mile. Using this model will be the cost of a flight that travels 875 miles. So I'm gonna plug in 875 miles for the spot for distance, which is x, and solve. So y equals 0 0.0876 times 875 plus 27.9 and that whole right hand side can just be plugged into your calculator 0876 times 5 plus 27 plus 9 $104.55 now that's not guaranteed this is still regression this is just our best guess you know more than just miles affect the cost of a flight, so this is just our guess about what it would cost. Do the exact same thing for D, but just plug in 3,500 there. Realize that you're extrapolating because you're probably outside of your data. Actually, we don't have data here, so we don't know if we're extrapolating or interpolating. For E, the cost of 91 dollars, or how far can you get for 91? The 91 goes in for Y this time, and then we solve, and this does require just a few algebraic steps since our variable is now inside the expression over here so we got to like subtract 27.9 from both sides and so we get our 91 minus 27.9 equals 63.1 0.0876x divide both sides by this slope divide by 0 0.0876 and go 720 miles approximately. Again, this is regression, that's not guaranteed, but approximately that's how far we're going to get. All right, next page. Uh, evaluate each function. We get a definition for the function, then we get told where at what value to uh, you know, plug what, what value to plug in as our input to get an output. So k of n equals negative 2n minus 5. So k of 4 equals negative 2 times 4 minus 5. 4 replaces the n there and there. And now it's important to keep writing this left-hand side as k of 4 so we keep track of the input. That's the whole power of function notation is it tells you what we plugged in and then what we got out. In this one, we got negative 13 out. Let's try plugging in an expression, like in 32. So this used to take the input, double it, minus 4. Well, it still does that, but now the input has changed from t to t minus 4. So that t minus 4 is going to get plugged in right here. 2 times t minus 4 minus 4. 2t minus 8 minus 4. 2t minus 12. And then give it the power of keeping track of its input by writing it as h of t minus 4 equals 2t minus 12. Okay, um, operations with functions. So uh, I'll do 33. g plus h of 3. So what this means is do g of 3, do h of 3 separately, and add the results. So g of 3 would just be 3 squared plus 4 times 3. I'm plugging in the 3 there and there. Plus 
h of 3 would be 2 times 3 minus 1. So this becomes 9 plus 12 plus 6 minus 1 equals, I'm just going to do that in my calculator, 9 plus 12 plus 6 minus 1 equals 26. All right, uh, now we got some composition. One thing up here with uh, operations, if this was minus, I would need to do this in a set of parentheses, but here that these parentheses wouldn't matter because the plus wouldn't change really my order of operations. But just keep that in mind. All right, h of g of x. That means evaluate x or g at x, but take the result, plug it into h. So I need to evaluate g at x. Well, that means this won't change. But now I do h at that value, so negative 2x minus 2. This becomes 2 times negative 2x minus 2 plus 2. This x here got replaced with this whole expression. And so now I've got, distribute the 2, negative 4x minus 4 plus 2, negative 4x minus 2, and let's write it out as h of g of x equals negative 4x minus 2. So g got plugged into h. Same thing here. g will get plugged into h, but notice here, and I'll just set this one up. I'm not going to finish solving it. It gets plugged in at both of the possible inputs. Actually, this one's going to take you a while because you need to expand this all the way out. Well, if you're watching this, you don't have to, you can just leave it like that. I'm fine with you not having to expand that. That would take a while. All right, finding inverses. First thing, write it with an x and a y. So y equals 2x minus 6. Next thing, swap x and y. x equals 2y minus 6. Next, solve for y. So I'm going to add 6 to both sides. x plus 6 equals 2y. Divide both sides by 2. I get that y equals x plus 6 over 2. But then lastly, rewrite it with function notation. f to the negative 1 of n equals n plus 6 over 2. So rewrite with x and y, swap x and y, solve for y, rewrite with function notation. All right, find the inverse of each function, then graph the function and its inverse. So, practice again, y equals negative 4x minus 8, x equals negative 4y minus 8, x plus 8 equals negative 4y, y equals x plus 8 over negative 4, the inverse of f of n equals n plus 8 over 4, going to plot the original function. It's got a y-intercept of negative 8. That's somewhere down here, slope of negative 4. So I'm going to go backwards, 1 up 4. So I was at negative 8, negative 7, negative 6, negative 5, negative 4. Keep that slope going. So there's my original line. Now this looks hard to graph, but because I know these are inverses, I can just invert every point and be done with it. So the negative 2 comma 0 becomes 0 comma negative 2. Uh, negative 1 comma negative 4 becomes negative 4 comma negative 1, and so on, but two points make a line. There's the line my inverse, and these should look symmetrical over the line uh, y equals x, which is this line right here. And they do look like they're symmetrical over that. Okay, uh, even, odd, or neither. This one, even. This one, odd. This one has y-axis symmetry. That's our definition for even. This one has origin symmetry. That's our definition for odd. Even, odd, or neither. This one is odd. It has only odd exponents, including the invisible one on the x. This next one is neither because it has even and odd, because you count the little one here as odd. This one here would be even, because you could think of this as an x to the zero here, and zero 
is even, and this last one would be odd because only odd exponents and the constant is zero, so this could just go away. Okay, uh, wait, do we have another page? Nope. Uh, so that's that for this review video. Have a good rest of your day.